Hi, welcome to my channel and my kitchen. My name is Anne and today we're going to bake an elderflower and lemon drizzle cake. Last month I made my very first baking video, which finally made the baking part of books, baking and vlogging come into effect. Um, and I really like doing that, but it does take a lot more uh, effort, I guess, than standing in front of a bookcase and talking. So I've decided that I'm going to try to make one of those baking videos each month. I'm not sure yet if that's going to be doable or not. Um, I don't know if I want to film myself every time I'm baking, because that does kind of take the therapeutic effect out of it for me, I think. But I'm going to try out a new recipe today and um, I thought it would be fun to film it because I think this is going to be quite delicious. I've made a lot of lemon cakes but I've never added the elderflower twist to it and I think the combination between the, uh, the lemon and the flowery elderflower is going to be really good. So grab your tea and let's get baking. I usually make my lemon cakes in a loaf tin but I thought it would be nice to try uh, a spring form tin this time and make a round cake out of it. My tin has a diameter of 18 centimeters but I think 20 still works as well. So as for the ingredients I'm not going to film them all separately because I'm feeling a bit lazy. Sorry. You're going to need the usual suspects, flour, butter, sugar, baking powder, a pinch of salt, eggs, but I also use a bit of corn flour in this recipe and of course there's lemon. And for the drizzle on top you're going to need some elderflower cordial. So the first step is to cream together the butter and the sugar. I've got 125 grams of butter here um, and it's softened and I have 140 grams of granulated sugar. Add both of those to a large bowl and then get out your electric mixer. So you beat it until it is pale and fluffy, something like this. Then you take a little break because you want a sip of tea. And then it's time to add the eggs. You need three eggs for this recipe and you want to add them one by one. Uh, so add one in, mix it through, add the next, mix it through, add the next, mix it through, basically. So now you have a light and airy and fluffy and pale um, mixture. So now we'll sieve in the dry ingredients. And here I have 200 grams of plain flour, 2 teaspoons of baking powder, a pinch of salt and 40 grams of corn flour. And you just want to sieve that in. And you sieve it first because you want the cake to be light and airy. And after sieving that in, you just mix it all through using a spatula. You don't... So then you have a pretty beautiful batter. And the last thing you're going to add to this is your lemon. So right here I have the zest of one lemon. I have this very handy hand zester, I guess. You just hold it like this and you've got the lemon over here and then you can just zest it and it collects the zest in this compartment. My parents bought this for me once and I've been using it a lot ever since. So you've got all your lemon zest and you just add that to your batter. And then you're also going to add lemon juice to this. I have juiced the entire lemon. I'm going to sieve it first because there are some pieces of the seeds, pits, I don't know, in here. And you don't want that in your cake. And then you mix all of that through the batter as well. So once you've mixed that all through and the batter looks something like this, it's time to get out your tin. I've lined it with greaseproof paper on the bottom and uh, greased it with um, liquid butter on the sides. Um, and like I said, mine is 18, has an 18 centimeter diameter, but you can use one that's slightly bigger. I think I wouldn't do smaller, but we're going to see how it goes when we add the batter to the tin, which is the next step. Mm -hmm. 
So once it's all spread out and it's in a tin, you put it in the oven. Um, I'm going to bake this at 180 degrees. I'm not sure yet how long I will have to bake it for because in the loaf tin this recipe usually has to bake for 40 to 50 minutes I believe. But because this is a round tin and the layer of batter is smaller than in a loaf tin, I think it will have to bake a little bit shorter. Um, but I will get back to you on that. So here's the finished cake. If you think, well, this looks different than before uh, or after this, then you're right. I actually made this cake again in the weekend because I wasn't entirely satisfied with how it ended up. It was very delicious, but you couldn't taste the elderflower very well. So I made it again and I made a few changes, but I edited the video in such a way that you don't notice those changes or I explain them on the screen or something like that. So yeah, the cake is cooled down for five minutes, so now it's time to add the drizzle. This is five tablespoons, I believe, of elderflower um, cordial. So what we're going to do now is prick a bunch of holes in the cake. And we do this so that the drizzle can seep through and not just lie on top of the cake. And then the next step is to just pour the drizzle over the cake. And I really hope you can taste it this time. Because the first try tasted, well basically just of lemon, which is of course delicious, but then the idea of a lemon elderflower cake is a bit misleading, I guess. So, I've poured it all over, and then for the last um, step, the finishing touch, I have some granulated sugar here, and I'm just go going to sprinkle that over the elderflower syrup to add a kind of crunchy crust or something like that to it. This is about one tablespoon, maybe a little bit more, of granulated sugar. So, that's enough, I think. So yeah, um, that's that. Um, I'm now going to let it cool off a little bit more before I cut it and taste it. So the rest of the footage you'll be seeing is from my first try at this cake. So I'll give it back to past and bye! Okay, so here we are with the finished result. This is what the cut cake looks like. I think it looks pretty darn delicious. Um, I've just taken some photos for the blog. If you want the full recipe, you can go there, like I said earlier. Yeah, I haven't I haven't tasted it yet, but I think I'll do so now. So, let's taste the finished cake. Yep, that's pretty good. <laughs> I was a bit scared it might have ended up a bit too lemony and, and too tangy, but that's not the case at all. It's just lemony enough. I think I might have wanted to add a little bit more elderflower perhaps but my baking videos are going to be more like baking vlogs with some instructions on the way than fully formed recipes I think because I like them more that way I think they're more spontaneous there might also be some videos in which I explain some of my recipes that I've made time and time again um, so that are completely thought out and um, tested but I like these videos in which I make something I haven't made before quite a lot as well. So that was it for this baking video. Please let me know if you're going to bake this. Send me a picture of the end result. Um, or let me know um, if you like these baking videos because these are still a bit more experimental than the book videos. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. I'm going to eat the rest of that piece of cake now. Bye!